Okay, here we go. The Pen and Maggie Show. He's about to get crazy and wild. Stay for a while. Don't touch your radio the dial. The Pen Show. Kicking it back. Sports talk. Listen to that and stay tuned for some giggles and laughs. Go. <laughs> you cannot convince me that that many people that fucking hate Donald Trump, that piece of shit motherfucker, there's no way that he got the popular vote. He got the fucking House and the Senate and the presidency. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. It really doesn't. <laughs> Welcome to the Planet Mikey Show. Well, maybe you should stop being a 400 pound dyke and he'd pay attention to you, Rosie. Was All over really? social media, the, these women are flipping out. It's always the women. I don't see too many guys flipping out, but they're crying. They look right into the camera, like TikTok videos, I know. a ton I of them, know. and they're it's screaming. It's oh, mental man. illness, Smitty. It really is because you know people can't stand it. How do they think? How do they think that normal people felt when when Biden got elected? Mm. Mass formation psychosis. They call it. That's it. Uh, I wonder how that meeting went today with them. Those two guys, uh, <laughs> Donald and uh, Joe. So has he gotten the most votes ever? I think for so. use president. Who? Trump. He uh, must have, right? I well, think... if you combine all the... Yeah, because three times. He ran three times. I mean, and, and FDR got in four times, but not nearly as many people. No, and he couldn't walk. So right. that you have that. Now, the other thing about it is that, I, you know, there's been discussion lately about how, okay, Obama got six, six, uh, 64 million votes, you know, and 62 million votes. In his two elections. Mm-hmm. And then Biden comes along and gets 80 million votes. <laughs> and everybody's, we're all going to say, why do you doubt that? Why are you doubting a fair and free election? They, they look well, at you like you're crazy. The numbers, <laughs> please, are you kidding? you tell me Biden got 20 million more votes than Obama, who was maybe the most president, uh, most popular politician that I can remember. Then they would label you an you know, election denier. That's yeah. it. You, ah. You're in a camp now. Yes. You're an election denier. Like okay. So many others. If that's the worst thing you can say about me, I'm doing pretty good. I'm fine. Yep. That's Bill not, Smith, I can say much worse. Yeah, well, Ben Kitchen, who can say bad things about anybody, because that's his modus operandi. He's good at it, though. He says bad things about everybody. He's a professional. Remember, uh, who is that nun, uh, Mother Teresa? Yeah. Oh. Remember you called her a whore? That bitch. Remember? Yeah, I see? remember. See, this is what I'm saying. June 1st, 2016. <laughs> Get ready for random thoughts. And by the way, Ben, every time you hear me change direction on this podcast and go off into... Exactly. Give the bell a ding. <laughs> Mark Bellhorn. That, that, we should change your name. To Mark Bellhorn? Yeah, to Mark Bellhorn. Do I have to grow up much bigger sideburns? Well, you probably wouldn't have to buy a drink, though. You'd just walk in. People wouldn't even recognize that you're not no, him yeah, because they don't true. know who he looks yeah, like. That's <laughs> Hi, it's, it's me, Mark Bellhorn. Remember I hit those two off the foul pole in the playoff? And, oh, oh, hey, it's on me. I am a nondescript white guy. <laughs> Uh, we're brought to you by Pro Automotive, uh, three locations, one in you Dudley, two in Webster. Greatest people SUV. in the history of Pro Automotive, automotive is who to see. Pro, 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 Pro! Automotive. And Pro Automotive FM. Co- no, no, car, you don't. If it's under the hood, go to Pro it's Automotive. tortured me. It'll turn out good. Tell them Mikey sent you when you go in there. They always treat everybody the same. They treat everybody great, and they and they have a website called ProAutomotiveMA.com. And they don't even do you, care that we do short commercials for them. When really? you buy your cars, your fleet, yes. do you take each one of them there yes. to have them checked before you uh, buy it? Uh, no, I don't have them checked because I, I, I know that whatever could be wrong with this car, they're, they're going to fix it. Oh, okay. Because it's are, un- under the hood. These are ASA certified technicians. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't, I don't risk that. ASA? You know, the worst thing you can do is you go to a dealership, you say, can I take it to my mechanic? They go, no. What, are you kidding me? We got too much going on in there. There's dead birds in that engine. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get them out, so we left them in there. And then if you take that car and you, t- I'm going to drive it to Webster from there, it could break down on the way there. Mm. And then, you know. So what I do is I, I look at the car. I look at the mileage. I look at the car facts. You know, I try to get the home telephone number of the prior five owners. I call them at home. <laughs> dinner time only. I call her at dinner time because that's when they answer. And I say, well, hey, so what's up with this car? Is they good care of this car or what? But I'll tell you what. doesn't matter because at Pro Automotive, they uh, – don't, don't. At Pro Automotive, they, they fix everything perfectly the first time, and they're, they're real nice about it. Anyway. Well, actually, they don't let the car they, – they won't give it back to you if it's not fixed. That's right. If they run into a problem. Well, they won't like, even say you can come pick it up now. They won't yeah. lie to you. you know, yeah, they they're don't need to good. install the knibbling pin, but don't worry, you can take it. And you get a text saying, okay, the car has entered the shop. You know, Here's what we found. They, get, you get, they give you the, all the updates. It's amazing. Um, I I have so many things to talk about. If it, Again, I, I could go off in 19 different directions. 
And we have the guy who usually is the lackadaisical ne'er do well, yeah, hitting the button today, and he Hello. looks like he's ready to actually function. He's done well so Hello. far. And Bill Smith pushes the rest of the buttons. So if there are any technical snafus, you, you know who to write <laughs> to. Uh, speaking of radio type people, I saw something on Twitter where they had a clip of uh, and Fred Toucher from the Toucher Show. Toucher, uh, yeah, yeah, Toucher and Hart. I Toucher, I don't even know her. The <laughs> the show was talking about. They were talking about Bill Belichick. Oh. And he was shitting all over BB. Mm -hmm. Toucher was. Why? Saying he's a dick, you know, and all this stuff. Oh, that's nice. shot, I, Look, I don't know Fred very well. I met him once or twice. Show some respect for Belichick. You would think. First of all, A, yeah. he's got eight Super Bowl rings, correct? Yeah, let's go six as a head coach. Though. Second winningest. We don't we don't you, you don't count, count the giant no, ones. You don't he was count. the defensive coordinator I, of the yeah, champion I get it, Giants, but Lawrence you don't, Taylor. You don't count them for other coaches. <laughs> He's got no eight one, rings. No one brings does it he up not for have eight coaches. rings? Does he not have eight rings? I'm sure he has more than that. I, I Seems like a gentleman that would buy No, him does he have eight rings. Super Bowl <laughs> rings? Yes, he does. Yes. He That's does. all I said. And you jumped on me like a fucking monkey at fucking a football. I told you Ben's a professional. All right. So anyway. He's crapping all over Bill Belichick, who I like. And I'm thinking, why, why would he do this? Uh, you know, the guy said, and then they were showing pictures of Bill with his girlfriend on the beach. You know, Bill's got a girlfriend who's, what, 24? 25, 24, 25. Former cheerleader. Yeah. People hate that. You know, <laughs> Guys don't want to be d get dating former cheerleaders. That's awful. Is she the head cheerleader? I don't know. But <laughs> Everybody but, needs love. Why, does, why is Toucher picking on the greatest football coach in the history of football? Why? Well, that's good. Punch up at least to yeah. get attention. That's I what he don't, wants. I don't. I don't. Again, I Isn't don't that understand. Every him. radio host. Well, wants? He, yeah. this a week after shitting all over <laughs> his ex partner, you know, uh, Rich. Because it was Toucher and Rich, right? Yeah. Oh no, he shat on Rich too for getting yeah. fired. Even yeah. after he got fired. Uh, no. Yeah, he he's so something's he wrong him. with him. He does not like him. I guess. But I don't think people drank alcohol that early in the morning. You know, <laughs> to get that belligerent. You know, I think he's sober. You think? You you gotta watch these clips. <laughs> then say that. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm gonna change subjects here. Yep. What is it, Mike? I was in Wound Socket, which is an absolute Rhode Island shithole. It, oh, by the way, you know you think Worcester's a shithole? No, no. Go to Wound Socket. You go Worcester. Hey, <laughs> hey, that's great. It's like Beverly Hills. Wound Socket, Rhode Island, northernmost town in Rhode Island. It's right on the Massachusetts border. Of Bellingham, I believe. I saw a sign in Wound Socket. I saw a sign down in Wound Socket. Wound Socket, Wound Socket. And the sign said, Is he okay, Bill? Vote for Shabazz Raha. Oh, Shabazz. I was S H A B A Z Z. Yeah, I like Shabazz. That. That's a good first name. name. Yep. Short for Shabazzism. And Raha, R A J A. Now I'm thinking, Raja. Is he African or is he from an Hispanic company, uh, country? Shabazz Raja. Raja. Yeah. And I went, Raja. That's a good he, name. The guy's running for like town council. I said to myself, I got to make a note of that name, and follow his career. You know, you never know. He could end up like a congressman from Rhode Island or mayor of Woonsocket. What did you find out about this guy? I found out he yeah, came in up. seventh, uh, eighth, and they had they had, they were voting for seven positions, so he just missed it. Ooh. But he'll run again. Yeah. With a name like Shabazz Raha, you're going to be something. I would think. There it is. Shabazz. Right now, it, it, it's unbelievable. Ben Kitchen is Googling. It's it's yeah, R A it's R A J A. No H on the end. Oops, I didn't mean to put an H on there. Well, if there was, if that would be Raja. Woon socket. Right. Not Raja. Oh, no, this socket, this fucking. Socket. Don't worry about it. You know, we'll follow his career. We'll do it next week. What I if, just wanted to mention the guy. What if he's a, a bad shot. guy? Maybe that's why he didn't get the gig. Well, I don't know, but I, I, when I'm in Moon Socket, <laughs> the first thing I do is I, I make sure that everybody knows I'm tight with Shabazz Raha, so don't screw with me. That's good. Moon Socket is a dump. Have you been there? No. By the way, if any people that are listening are residents of Moon Socket, <laughs> I apologize for you having to live there. Uh, quick, oops, quick sports. Ah, <laughs> Quick look at sports. Celtics first. I, okay, I watched the game last night. Did you watch, Ben? Yes. 
Smitty, did you watch? No, no. I didn't even know there was a game. They're playing Atlanta. It's game. <laughs> <laughs> it's game one of the NBA Cup, which is, to me is the stupidest fucking thing. Uh, having a tournament in the middle of the year where you just play it. Regular games against other guys. Is that called the Emirates Cup? Yeah. Okay. That's the sponsor. Okay, so they they're playing the NBA Cup, and it's supposed to be a big friggin' deal for somebody. I don't know. I don't know. It's stupid. It's not a big deal. It's almost like the World Baseball Classic, where you know you say, okay. Did you bet? Did you bet on this game? I did have the Celtics to win, and they were favored by minus fifteen hundred ninety nine on the money line. I mean, I was like. Yeah, it's Atlanta, right? And Atlanta doesn't have Atlanta the best, without their best without player. their best player. So the what did the Celtics do? They were leading by 15 points in the third quarter. 15 points, a good lead for the Celtics, the third quarter. And then they coughed up well for the game 20 turnovers. Now, what kind of professional basketball team, never mind a championship team, thinks they're going to win any basketball games when you give the team the the, the other team the ball twenty times on turnovers? Was Shabazz on that team? Shabazz Raha? Yeah. No, he was in Moonsocket. We're probably watching. So they're up fifteen with eight minutes left in the third. <laughs> twenty turnovers. The game gets forced to the, the the final seconds of the game, and they 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 just kept blowing it, oh. and they couldn't rebound off the. They didn't have any rebounds going. They were out rebounded, and they gave up all those turnovers, and it was embarrassing. I, if I'm the Celtics and everybody involved with the Celtics I, right now, I'm embarrassed about what happened. Uh, I, the turnovers, whatever, that's not a consistent thing. It'll happen from time to time. I, I don't get too upset about like a one off like that. They are consistently getting out rebounded, and that really pisses me off. Because rebounding is generally a hustle stat. How about giving up a 15 point lead in the third quarter to lose to, oh, to, that, to Atlanta ridiculous. without their best player? Ridiculous. That's embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. All right, I just want to change the topics now on this world of sports. Hey, before you go, what's the most money you ever bet on a team, and how much? What's the most money you ever made on a bet? Uh, not that much. Cause oh, by the way, just so you know. Yes. You know, I put a bank in there. Let's say, let's say, it's just I'm not gonna give you exact numbers, but let's say I put a thousand in okay. to start my bank. I got five thousand now. Hey. You know, I know that's not a legit number. I started with five bucks. So I was gonna say you started with ten, <laughs> now you have fifty. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm on a tear with parlays. In fact, you know, you know what parlay vu means? Parlay vu. Francais. 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 Parlez voodoo. That's what I got going for me. I use the parlez voodoo to make money, and I have five times the bank I started with on, on football, all using all parlays and teases. So you put a spell on the team? Teases. You know how I know so much about teases? I dated them all. <laughs> now, uh, but, but what a, what a the bit. Okay, the Bears Pats mm-hmm. thing. <laughs> the, the, the reason Toucher was crapping on Bill Belichick was because Belichick went on the media and said, uh, they were talking about, oh, the, well, the Patriots won, and rather than give the Patriots a compliment, Bill said, well, it, the Bears are terrible, you know, which is a, which is true. <laughs> yes. So he said the truth, and for some reason, Toucher goes, oh, well, Belichick is a dick, and all this stuff. They were crapping on him. I couldn't understand that. But he's right. The Bears are the worst team I've seen in a long time. And the Patriots are now, they got three wins now. You think Toucher might secretly be a Bears fan? No, no I don't think so. He's a so. Jets fan. Oh. Um, I just thought that was... I listen to that show too much. I know too much. Um, Belichick is kind of being... Listen, he has every right to be, to, I guess, to a certain extent, but he's just kind of being petty since he's been in the media. Well, yeah, but... Won't so really what? talk... Didn't talk about them beating the Bengals in week one and started waiting until they started losing until he yeah, started so talking. That's because he's going to be the next Cowboys coach, and you know it. I do know it. Um, also, he... Throw the Bengals in there. The Bengals? How about... Throw the bangles in there. Bubbles, bangles, see how they run. Who did that? Was that the Mills Brothers? I don't even know what you just I, did. I heard Steve Lawrence did a version of that. Did one. we do Cab Driver ever on this show? Did we ever do that as a song? Because that's that's the song I'd like to do someday. The one, Hey, Cab Driver? Cab Driver, drive by Mary's place. Does that also force you to change the subject? The Mills Brothers did that. The Mills Brothers, yeah. That's right. The General Mills Brothers? The General Mills Brothers. Speaking of cereal, we're going to talk about cereal in a second because I'm a cereal killer from way back. And I'll t- There's a segue. That, now, you're dinging <laughs> that too much, Mark. I don't know. Mark fucking Bellhorn. <laughs> uh, just quickly on the Red Sox, okay, because the, the, the talk is that uh, Juan Soto <laughs> might be available to the Red Sox. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Huh? Juan yeah. Soto. Soto. So- you know how you say Juan Soto in Spanish? Just like this. Juan Soto. 
Uh, I just wanted to just besmirch the Red Sox for a second here. Okay. First of all, they can't be in the market for Juan Soto because they, the owners of the Red Sox now are douchebags. But Whoa, how can you talk about them like that? They brought us four titles. Not not lately. <laughs> Way to pull a toucher. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's rich. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, 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 do you know what the Red Sox are best at? Striking out. Period. End of story. I remember when the world record for strikeouts was Dave Nicholson, 175 Ks in one season. Listen to this. The Red Sox had six players with more than 100 strikeouts. <laughs> Six players. Darren Duran, who is a good player and who had 330 total bases and played great, but he strikes out. He's leadoff hitter. He strikes out all the time. He led the team in strikeouts with 160 Ks. But still, he was the leadoff hitter. Leadoff hitter. Yeah. Right behind him <laughs> with 159 strikeouts <laughs> was Tyler O'Neill, the, the muscle head guy, you know, muscle boy. But he struck out 159. So between two players, they hit 300. 19 strikeouts. It's ridiculous. Wait a minute. There's more. Sedan Rafael. How do you say that in Italian? He struck out 100. Rafael Devers struck out 100 times. Mm-hmm. Walt Willier Abreu struck out 100 times. They had six guys with 100 plus Ks. You can't do that shit and expect to win <laughs> shit. I'm sorry. You're supposed to put the bat on the ball, not under the ball, around the ball, or don't swing. Nah. These guys strike out like champs. It's unbelievable. I yeah, but you it. love Jaron Duran because he does your. He led the league in your favorite play in baseball last year. Uh, triples. triples. 14 triples. Yeah, 14. Is it 14 or 15? 14. Yeah, see, 14. Smitty said 15. Like, he would know. <laughs> <laughs> I learned from the best. Oh. My God, I just blew his nose you know for what, those of you at home wondering what You know what's that great sound about was. that is that some actual cerebellum came out that time. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and so and now it's going to be hard to do the rest of the podcast because I lost cerebellum. <laughs> That's Mike Adams. What are you laughing at, Ben? Close to the show. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Tristan Cassis? What about him? Played 63 games. Yeah. How many times did he strike out? 67. 77. Ah, he sucks. And you know what else? Trevor Story, he couldn't even play. He's a he's the highest paid guy on the team, right? Played 26 games. 26 Struck games. out 33 times. Oh! <laughs> See, this is where the batting coach should be fired. <laughs> right. You, you, yeah, it's, it's, this is the style of baseball, though. It, it's, you, you, it's disgusting. Uh, I like the pitch Only clock. Two true outcomes, but you know, all you got home clubs. runs and strikeouts. It's like, that's not what the way the game is played. Hit the right, you know, hit and run, pitch, you know, bunt, throw the ball away. Right okay, sorry. I think I need a. To- I think I need a topic change. Are you okay, Mike? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, just I'm fine. Make a make sure. Page two. <laughs> <laughs> Dale. 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 Yeah, Dale never said Dale. He said Dale. This is Dale Holly. I mean, no, this is <laughs> this is Dale Arnold. Oh my God. Hi, this is Dale Arnold. I love Dale. Oh, you can love him all you want to. That's how he said it. You know he I, did. I, I do. This is Dale. <laughs> they sang that song, The Farmer in the Dale. Can the I farmer. give you a random baseball question? You can, but I'm not, maybe I won't answer. How many times was Roy White an all-star? Roy. Oh, too many for, you know, because the Yankees were so bad then. Number six, he was. Uh, that was his uniform. Number Roy White, switch hitter. Uh, he was an all-star, uh, all-star a lot, for considering that he wasn't that good. Six. Twice. That's it? Yep, 69. He was 70. robbed. He should have been. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, shoot. <laughs> Excuse me. You okay, Mike? <laughs> so gross. Yeah. Mike Adams, the host of the show. Ladies you know my and favorite uh, Olympic skater, whoever it was? Tara Lipinski. Peggy Flem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shaquille O'Neal uh, has... Oh, oh, it's a news story, kind of. Sportsy news story. You want to hit that sounder? Yeah, do you have that? We like to do it in a radio, in a radio style. Right, here we go. And now some sports news with Mike Adams. Thanks, Bill. Shaquille O'Neal has always been known for doing things big. Although, oddly, for a guy who's 7 foot 1, 387 pounds, he has a tiny dick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> How would I know that? How could I possibly know that? <laughs> hey, Shaq, I don't need an autograph or anything, but could you show everybody your dick? <laughs> I 
that's the host of the show, yeah, Mike I'm sorry, I lost it there for a second. All right, so Shaquille's been... Uh, so it probably wasn't too surprising when Shaquille decided to give his friend Donald Trump a luxury gift worth hundreds of thousands of dollars for his wedding. Mm. The gift was back in 2005 when Donald married Melania. Uh, Shaq went all out with his present, gi- gifting the couple a stunning Rolls-Royce Phantom valued at $325,000. Now, what do you give a billionaire? <laughs> I don't know. Something that's nice. Yeah, I got you a little something. So. Yeah, it's, a little, it's out in the driveway. It's, it's, it's pretty nice. So Here's a car you'll probably never drive. This, this wasn't a typical wedding registry item. Shaq joked that the white Rolls Royce would be parked at his house for Trump to use whenever he needed it. <laughs> now nah, he gave it to him. So this is the kind of larger-than-life gesture that we've come to expect from the basketball legend uh, Shaquille O'Neal. That was a, a Bethesda by the Sea in Palm Beach, Florida. The Episcopal Church there was where it was held, and the reception was, of course, at Mar-a-Lago. Mm-hmm. 400 guests. Shaq was included in that guest list with his wife, his then-wife, Shawnee. She divorced him, you know. His small dick. Uh, <laughs> there were 400 guests <laughs> who came to celebrate the day of the real estate tycoon and future U.S. president. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So now... It's no secret that Shaq has a taste for luxury. He once recounted buying three Rolls Royces to prove a point to a car salesman who doubted his ability to afford them. (laughs) Okay. First of all, a black guy, seven foot three, comes into your store, and you don't know who he is. You don't know that it's Shaquille O'Neal, and you doubt his ability to buy... Buy a Rolls Royce, so he buys three. Oh, how much of an asshole do you feel like? You know, after that exchange. So you doubt he doubted that you could buy them, so you just paid him a ginormous commission. Yes, <laughs> maybe you that's know. It. But see, that's a, uh, and the no, manager probably went, "Holy shit, man! You do, yeah. you're the employee of the year." Doubt don't, everyone that comes you, in here. You know, the, you play with them. You say, "Don't you know who that is? That's Muggsy Bogues." <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, so. Generosity is a major factor in Shaq's popularity, whether he's surprising strangers by buying them expensive presents or paying for their groceries while waiting in line. He's done that, too. That's nice. If I, you can do that. So I can't I, wait to title this episode, Mikey Details Shaq's Dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, so now, page three. <clears throat> uh, of course, you know that we now have a new uh, president-elect. Mm. And uh, and a whole new cabinet. Mm-hmm. You know, new cabinets, they're expensive these days. Have you noticed that? Inflation. Uh, but meanwhile, there's been so, a lot of suffering going on, as Smitty mentioned. People freaking out yeah. emotionally, cutting off their hair, crying in front of the camera, leaving their families, moving out of the... You know, they, whatever. They fear a coming apocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? When I had my llama farm, I feared... Alpacalypse. <laughs> yeah. I was af- so afraid of them because alpacas, they'll bite you. Yeah, they do. They spit too, They're don't nasty. they? Nasty. Yeah. So I got a lot of rugs now at my house. Took care of that. Anyway, uh, the other suffering that's going on has to do with the different networks that hate Trump. Mm. And we know which networks they are. That would be ABC, CBS, uh, MSNBC, mm. particularly NBC. You got to remember when you say yeah, that, that, you have to air quote that they hate Trump. They they love Trump. Well, ratings, uh, baby. Ratings, well, yeah. if they don't, well, they don't, a, don't hand, handle handle it. There's a, a problem. T- MSNBC is being sold. That's right. I was, in fact, I got that part of the story right here. Oh, well, so I, Trump I, is he buying it? Yeah. No, no, MSNBC he, is on on the block. Elon Musk is thinking of buying <laughs> CNN because they're going down too. Yeah, they're, it's really like it's bad financially for them. And he's going to have all the female anchors to try to get ratings. Do, go topless when they read the uh, the news and when they talk on the show. And he's going to call Finally. it. He's going to call it Titter dot com. Rated X. What, Finally, <laughs> naked news goes mainstream. <laughs> so he, here's the numbers. Okay, In, glad you're not still doing sports. This is unbelievable. The, the, this is the lineup of pathetic ass wipes on MSNBC. <laughs> okay, Morning Joe, their first hour down is down 39.6% in its ratings. And they weren't uh, really particularly good before that. Second hour down 36.9%. Yikes. Andrea Mitchell, she of the lizard neck, <laughs> she's down 39.7%. I mean, unbelievable. She should just retire hmm. and make her neck into a handbag. <laughs> Ari Melber. 
is on there. He's a, he fancies himself some cool ass sophisto lawyer. His numbers are down forty nine point six percent. I think he's on what? I don't, I don't watch him. He's on at six o'clock or something like that. Man. Joy Reid, the only it, you know the only person that I've ever seen that's a blatant racist doing. You know what? Any kind of, I agree with you. And she I, hates I, white people. I can forgive anybody. You know, it's, a lot of them are just jerks. But there's something about Joy Reid. She Manning. hates white people. It's awful. It's terrible. Everything it's, she says turns into a, a, a hate, a yeah. hatred spew so, off. She, she just keeps throwing logs on the fire. It's it's terrible. You know, she, she should understand. She can't help being black. We can't help being white. It's not something we can control. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> God, she's awful. Annoying. I'd like to hear you debate her. Well, you know who's on after her is Chris Hayes. Oh. What a pussy that guy is. <laughs> I mean, he's so, he thinks he's smarter than everybody. Oh, yeah. His numbers are, oh, by the way, Joy Reid's readout numbers down. She 54% she's lost half, Oof. more than half of her audience. Jesus. All in with Chris Hayes down 47%. Alex Wagner. Who would be cute if she wasn't so stupid? Is down fifty three point six. How about the Dorchester native, that boneheaded, lantern jawed Lawrence O'Donnell oh, guy? Stop the hammering! What? Stop <laughs> the hammering! His numbers. He he holds the record. Oh wait, not yet. Sixty percent. His audience is down. Oh, and the ratings for Stephanie Rule, who's really kind of like a little pom pom cheerleader for the Democratic Party. She's just so peppy is. and you know. Her numbers are down 67%, so she's lost two-thirds of her audience. So MSNBC is for sale for yeah. a reason. Yeah. A, they suck. B, they really, really suck. Mm. And C, they can't suck enough. And they can't believe that they're failing because of poor performance or, no. or, or complete disinterest. No. Jerry Williams said it best. If you're behind the mic or on TV, don't be boring ever. No. And that's what no. they did. They committed that sin. Yeah. And don't, if you're also, if you're on TV, don't have... You know, a multitude of facial warts because people are just not going to want to watch you. Okay. It's not like having venereal warts where no one can see them. Right, Ben? Right. <laughs> next, <laughs> next. <laughs> there you go. All right. So, the next few months, I'm told, CNN will implement another round of layoffs. CNN, this is the other network. They, see, they just, their timing is awful. Uh, it, hundreds of employees across the organization, according to reporter Dylan Byers, uh, referencing CNN's recent 100-person layoff seen over the summer. Mm. The fresh round of firings, the insiders said, will be more geared toward the production side of things, but there's a guy named Anderson Cooper oh. who makes $20 million a year mm. to get shitty numbers before he goes home and nurses his son, uh, which is really bizarre. Anyway, good for him. Uh, so they're saying he and who you know makes a lot of money too. That Aaron Burnett makes like six million dollars. Mm. She's so vapid, mm. right? What's she doing on TV? Um, yeah, so they're going to have on-air talent and uh, production people all because CNN and and MSNBC have had basically shared the same kind of dismal numbers, but CNN is below MSNBC. In in total uh, total numbers, they've changed ownerships uh, a lot. Uh, uh, let's see when he when uh, this guy uh, licked is his name, <laughs> and he should he didn't know how true that was going to be. Chris licked um, since he took over this past August. Since then, ratings have fallen more than twenty percent. I mean, <laughs> should he have a job? No, nope. you know what? That, that, I mean, the, that's yeah. worse than mutt. The owners coming around and they they turn. Where's licked? Get him in my office. <laughs> Speaking of mutt. You know those 43 monkeys that escaped from the research uh, in, where's that, North Carolina? Yeah. 32 of them have, are back. They found 32 of them, but there's 11 monkeys out there in the wilderness, and they can hear them at night cooing to each other. Really? They <laughs> yes, can? right. And, you know, one of them goes, and the other one goes, no more mud at night coming up after this. Uh I wonder how he's doing, by the way, good old Mutt, huh? So I, I put that, I put a tweet with a picture of Mutt as the monkey on Twitter, and all of, you know, all of his protectors, all Kirk Minahan's f fans, started trying to shit on me like I give a rat's ass, right? I, I said, look, when a monkey joke comes up, I, I said basically. Keep those monkeys away from me. I've had bad luck with monkeys. And, you know, because I had the d monkey that died on my watch. Uh, and mutt. Two things that really weren't good 
episodes in my life. So they all, oh, they, what, they got all protective of my because I because I referred to him as a monkey. But the, the morning show after I left, they were talking about him being a monkey. Remember they did the Planet Monkey show with him. Remember? <laughs> I don't know what these people are so sensitive. Hmm. <laughs> you know, and plus, if I'm mutt, I say, look. I probably achieved more than anybody else that has this much hair on their knuckles and on their back. Now, Vice President Kamala... I was say, I think Smurless would disagree with that. Yeah. Well, he's in a ring of fame, but it's, for, it's in Buffalo, for Christ's sake. We had a guy with a big hairy <laughs> back when I was in the Navy, and they shaved a racing stripe down his back. Yeah, really? Yeah. Uh, Vice President Kamala Harris's campaign, Joe... Spell sucks. Well, smash it, then. Uh they they have a forty no oh, they have a that's a, a, that's attached to the ring doorbell system here that's right yeah. uh, they have a twenty million dollar debt now if I'm not mistaken Kamala's Democratic funding was a billion didn't she get a billion dollars a billion and it was a world record breaking amount yeah well the campaign is struggling to cover staff and vendor payments now because they have a 20 million they spent the billion they said it actually might go up higher than 20 million they spent 1b yeah. you know and then they got 20 m's they need to pay back uh, sources revealed these high cost events and endorsements have depleted campaign resources the financial strain reportedly led the campaign to cancel a planned performance by 90s alt rock icon Alanis Morissette isn't that ironic mm. <laughs> uh, just to cut expenses she had one hand in her pocket, and the other hand was in her <laughs> other pocket. The campaign's Concert for the Vote series featured major artists like Bon Jovi in Detroit, Christina Aguilera in Las Vegas, Katy Perry, who, who's got a serious rack, mm, by the way, oil. in Pittsburgh. And Lady she's Ga so hot in person, too. L Lady Ooh. Gaga in Philadelphia aimed at energizing voters ahead of the election, and the eighth concert was canceled in Atlanta. They... They completely... Do you know she paid $10 million to Beyonce? Everyone was expecting a performance. And she Oprah... spoke for two and a half minutes and left and got $10 million. I don't understand why... She... <clears throat> she... Wait a minute. Beyonce got $10 million? Yeah. Oh. I... And I got nothing. You got nothing. And you are, after all, the sexiest man alive. I heard uh, the, earlier the People today. Magazine announced me as the sexiest man alive. Yeah. Uh, you want to see something? Stand back. Uh oh, oh Jesus! No, I can't unsee it. <laughs> I mean, Democrats really think that <clears throat> celebrities get twenty-two-year-olds. Like, eleven-year-olds aren't voting. I don't understand why they keep doing this or why they think that right. we're gonna give a shit if you bring out some pop singer whose peak was right. fourteen years ago. Yeah. And or even Taylor now Swift. I'm gonna you, say, vote? I, I, you say I love Taylor Swift. I love. That doesn't mean I'm gonna vote for who she says to vote yeah, for. I don't give I mean, a shit, right? Yeah. Again, it, they treat it like they're talking to ten year olds, eleven year olds, like twenty two year olds, twenty one year olds, eighteen year olds, whatever. They don't think that way. Plus, they would have to go over the line and say, you know what, Kamala's the, really gonna be good for this country. I don't get it. I you know I I think they I yeah, hope I, I hope they learned a lesson about how to not ever run a campaign ever again yep or run this whole situation the way yeah. they've done it because man they fucked up so bad and, I, and they fucked up all around it, every, uh, yeah. every move they made was, was stumps, bad yeah. terrible yeah, it was yeah. really bad and you know th that's what that's what happens and I think things are going to be better now I know that a lot of people hate Trump I, I understand that For, it's been eight nine ten years we've been listening to how much people hate Trump but th it's a linear choice. Do you want her, or do you want someone who's already done the job and did pretty well at it, yeah. whether you like his personality or not? It's, that's, that's his... By the way, I... Yeah, but I, what if the only thing you like is his personality? I think his personality's funny. You know, I, 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 I think, think he's funny. funny. <laughs> I do. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Um, the only thing I like about him is his personality. You don't like his hair? No. Oh, oh come God. on. <laughs> it's so fluffy. Oh, it looks like a mop that's been outside to dry. <laughs> that's just mean. Is well, Bill Belichick a dick? Go ahead, say it. Yes. No, he's not. I, I love like Bill, Bill Belichick. I love Bill Belichick. <laughs> um, oh, he's nice to me. Me too. All right. I, I delved into the because I, I'm shamefully unaware of rap music and yes. uh, hip hop or whatever you want to call it because I just don't, it's not my preference. But I said, somebody likes this stuff. Somebody's buying this shit. So I went and I said, okay, well, what did I miss in, let's say, last year? The, what are the top three rap songs from last year? And I Googled them. Because I hadn't heard them. Yeah. And I wanted to see what the lyrics are because 
part of music is obviously the melody, and then you have the lyrics or the message attached to it. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I found three songs. Do you want me to play the first one? No, I don't want you to play right anything. <laughs> I don't. You can't play these on the air. <laughs> they have they have bad words in them. No. The first one is Delhi. Have you heard that one? No. How do you spell that? D E L I. Okay. Not like New Delhi. Okay. No, like Delhi where you. Just and I'm going to just read this. I'm going to read these in my own voice. I'm not going to try to rap them or, you know, convey them in a musical sense. I'm just going to give you the lyrics. Go okay? ahead, Mike, and go. She a baddie. She's showing her panty. Stop playing with them, riot. She a baddie. She's showing her panty. She shake it like jelly. Damn. Hunted bands in Chandelier, but I'm still shaking ass in a deli. With my bitch getting deady, he like him a wetty. He want the wap, but I just want the fetty. And I'm bagging his partner. I'm petty. Not Tom Petty. I'm... I know. What do you think she was saying there? Well, <laughs> Ice Spice? Yeah. Yeah, what do you think? What was she I don't getting know. At? You lost me halfway through. What was she getting at? And what does she mean? She's uh, trying to wh- fuck? Why is she still in a deli? Uh, still shaking ass in a deli? Well, she's because uh, she wants that salami. Ah, uh, hide the salami. That's time. it exactly. Yes, yep. in her butt. He like him a wetty. Yeah, a wet. <laughs> That's the uh, wet. You know. All right. So a wet. I guess Meow. I think I've made my point on that. You did Thank lyrically, you. it's shit. But if it means something to her, then. Go for it. She's telling everybody, uh, I'm hot and I'm horny and I want to get laid. That's really great. By this guy over here. That's great. Yep. Now, the second song I found was, uh, I mean, I was thinking, it's First Person Shooter yep. was the name of the song. Oh. That's the number two song, rap song from 2023. The, the first one, Delhi, was number one. Yeah. Drake? For, no, I don't think so. Yes, it is. Okay, go. Okay. I can't do that, the lyrics to that, because the seven times he uses the N-word. In, in one song, huh. and I don't I don't use the N word. I know we can't say. The I don't N-words. use the N word, so uh, I I'm not going to do that one. But just so you know, the lyrically he's saying but 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 N word but that 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 the N word but that 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 the N word. I'm thinking this is not good. If if, if we're not supposed <laughs> this to say is not the, good. if we're not supposed <laughs> to say the N word, why does he get to say it seven times in one song? Well, it's he's Canadian. That's why. That's why yeah, we so. don't have. A... The third song on the list of top three rap songs. You ready for this? This is called. Uh, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck a mean, f- <laughs> something. Fuck, fuck them. Anyway, here's the lyrics. I, God, fuck you mean. Yeah, fuck you mean. Right. Gonna. Fuck you mean by that? By gonna. Yeah, by gonna. G U N N A. Right. Gonna. Gonna. Here's the lyrics. I'm about to pour up some syrup, or as Mike Tyson would say, syrup. Fucking this bitch like a perv, yeah. Smack from the back, grab her perm, yeah. Ice the berg, uh, shitting on all you little turds. Can't take that dick, wait your turn. In my own lane, we can't merge, yeah. Suck with no hands, you can learn, yeah. Let's see how much you can earn, yeah. Watch me go big like the worm, yeah. Now, what would keep you from buying that? I'll be honest with you, I don't know what the fuck you mean. Why, why, would, you, why would you not buy that? That's that, now that's, that's art. Now the dads would listen to that what? tune and look at his young daughter, seven or eight years old, nine <laughs> years old. And she's listening to it. Oh, I love this tune. Mm. Yeah, okay. Speaking of dads, I... I you're grounded I, for life. I got a problem, and, and I, your experienced parents, one yes. has two kids, the yeah. other has... Four. ...an indeterminate so amount of kids. Are you looking for Four that I know of. Yes. Parental advice? I would like some parental... And just the best advice you have for yeah. this situation. And this is currently what I'm going through with my three-year-old. And uh, he got strep throat last week, and so we had to give him amoxicillin, oh. that liquid stuff. He hates the taste. He spits it out every single time. Yeah. We've tried a lot of different things, but I need to... What's the best advice you have for how I get him to take the medicine that he absolutely does not want to take? First of all, you have to promise him something that... Follow it up with something he loves. Done. That hasn't worked. Didn't work? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Hold his nose. Done. And, and Didn't his work. little neck. 
and, <laughs> <throw> it, <laughs> and force it down his throat like you do with a puppy. It's you know what's funny about that? Yeah, we tried that. Didn't work. <laughs> No, he doesn't. He doesn't like amoxicillin. No. Can you mix it with something that he likes? Tried and then it. Fool him completely. We've tried it, and he caught on right. really quickly. Like I would take him to the emergency room. <laughs> strawberry, <laughs> strawberry milk works. Strawberry milk. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nestle strawberry milk. Oh, and right. you, you don't say anything about the uh, the the, the uh, amoxicillin. You just say, "Hey, I got some of this stuff." And show him the Nestle's thing. Yeah. Hey, try this. We've tried it in a bunch of different drinks. That that's interesting. All right. Tell him no TV Thanks, if he doesn't Bill. drink this for, for a year. <laughs> he doesn't know what the fuck a year is. Yeah, I know he doesn't. He's just two, right? Three. Three. That's what I meant. See, I was I left him at two. He just you got you Yeah, he's to, two tree. You gotta have a carrot and a stick, and you know, the kids gotta like carrots or the stick <laughs> doesn't mean anything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So anyway, we've delved into the world of rap, and that's the last time we're ever gonna have lyrics from rap songs because you know what? To me, you know, with, with all due respect, the people that made up these lyrics and sang the songs, it, that means something to them or they wouldn't have done it. Mm. But to me, it doesn't mean shit. And it's not going to change the world, my world anyway. But I bet the beat's great. I bet the groove is, is, is like cool sound. Well, you know, in your own lane, we can't merge. Suck with no hands, you can learn. Is something you could write on the bathroom wall. And we've people all go, okay, okay, I get it. We've all said that. <laughs> um... <laughs> So Trump has now got Tom home and oh, Tom, I'll do that. Yeah, <laughs> you take care of that kid's amoxicillin. And I'll I'll do the bell from now on. Uh, Tom Homan is the new guy, and he's like, he's like, the, he's exactly what I think we need to control the United States borders. Mm-hmm. He doesn't give Who's a shit. This guy. He used to be a, a an ice the head of ice right under the tr- ice yeah. spice. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and he's the he's going to be the new border czar. To make sure you know, you've seen him his, his clips on TV. Yeah, he's unbelievable. He's going to be in charge of sending everybody home. He's unbelievable. He, they said to him, "Oh, so you're going to separate families?" He says, "No." He says, "Well, she says, well, what are you going to take t- uh, ten million people and and deport them?" He says, "We can deport the whole family." Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so separate the family. No, you all go. You know what they? Uh, you they, would go with mommy and daddy, there, kids. What MSNBC and CNN and the rest of them don't tell you is that Bill Clinton, I think, it was fourteen or thirteen million people he sent back. Bill uh, Obama. Bill, Bill Clinton did this. Yeah. Well, Obama did, had a lot of it, but no one ever talked about him separating families. They just hmm. they didn't talk about it. And then when Trump came in, they made it a thing. Of course. And then you know when Biden came in, it wasn't a thing because everybody just came in. There was no separation of anybody because everybody just came in and whatever they wanted to. With the fentanyl, yeah. So now we got a whole different situation going on there, and uh, it's I a mess remember. we have to clean up that they created. You know what they need is that people have to understand in this country. It's a very simple thing, and they, we've heard it for years and years and years. No one's above the law. All the Democrats, are, <laughs> Trump has to be punished because no one's above the law. Well, yeah, twelve million people were above the law for, th- for three or four years coming across the border. What about them? It's called an invasion. It's the difference between legal and illegal. Mm-hmm. Ill, legal means not legal. Legal means <laughs> legal. That's all people have to understand. And if they want to come into this country, we uh, this country welcomes people from every other country <clears throat> into this nation if on they the do it legally. The and don't They're s- coming to America. Don't <laughs> start, you know what I'm saying, though? I mean, it's simple, isn't it? I don't hear you. you go to a port of entry, you don't cross the Rio Grande. God. Um, I, I was eating. America. <laughs> I was, I was eating cereal uh, last night, and I thought I figured it out. Cereal. People, I always have myself. What's my favorite cereal? Because when I was a kid in the sixties, yes, uh, we were sold constantly, a, a def, different cereals. It was a big G. A, Big G, uh, go go with the goodness of Cheerio. What do you got over there? A bottle in your hand? That's just straightening out my neck. Sounds like you're straightening out your colon. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that's this. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. So, I you know when I was a kid, it was like uh, you know cornflakes. It was very simple stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, tall up with the tall corn taste of Kellogg's cornflakes. The tall corn taste that's never been topped helps turn the tall ones into the small ones. You know, 
the, everything had a jingle. Uh, it was uh, Cheerios. Uh, those were the big cereals. But then they started putting in the sugar cereals, mm. you know. And I became a sugar pops kid. Uh, there was sugar crisp. Nothing tasted like Kellogg's sugar pops. Uh, no, and they, you know, never mind all the later stuff, Fruit Loops and all that. Oh, Fruit Loops are fantastic. But <laughs> this was okay. Here's how they. But here's here's a commercial. This is for Rice Krispies. You can snap, crap. Makes the world go round. Snap, crackle, pop, Rice Krispies. It's crackle, happy down, happy down, happy down. And this was a whole a minute and a half cartoon to sell you Rice Krispies. And the length of these commercials, it was always a minute, minute and a half, right, Smitty? Yes. It was unbelievable. Now, uh, but I figured out what my favorite cereal is, and it's and it's honeycomb. Go if you can find the honeycomb commercial. I'm looking for it. Have you noticed something very because special about new Kellogg's oat To me, and by the way, it's not because Tony Soprano sits down and eats honeycomb at the table. I love honeycomb cereal. The Jimmy Rogers honeycomb? The Jim, right, exactly. But there's a whole cartoon in here if you can find that. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, they do this whole thing, the honeycomb kid, and he's a cowboy hero. Here it is, right here. Listen to this. They make a hero out of this guy. Ready? It's good shit. That's the best cereal made. Now, <laughs> yes, I liked Sugar Pops. Yeah. And, you know, all these other things. And, I, you know, the uh, Post cereal had uh, uh, the Sugar Bear. Yeah. Uh, can't, can't get enough. He's like Dean Martin. That's right. Can't get enough of that sugar crisp. It keeps me going strong. <laughs> oh, hi, Granny. You remember that? Yeah. So I had all those cereals, and I was constantly ingesting them. And, you know, you wonder why you have a cavity when you go to the dentist. Because because people... Ah, sorry. <laughs> you sorry. Mad. Oh, sorry's good enough now because the podcast is almost over. Huh? Jeez. Oh, anyway, so what's your favorite cereal? That's my point. Raisin Hello, Bran. There. Raisin Bran. Post Raisin Bran. The only human in the forest. Ready not, Granny, here I come. I heard that. <laughs> it's Sugar Bear, and he's after my sugar crisp again. I can't get enough of that sugar crisp, sugar crisp, sugar crisp. Oh, he's coming. <laughs> Where will I hide my post sugar crisp? It's a honey of a snack, Put you know. Put it in your ass. Better slow him up with my magic. I can't get enough of that sugar crisp. It keeps me going strong. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a minute, you know. You get a, mi you get a minute of this stuff. In, in other words, to sell you one box of cereal back then, they were probably 59 oh, cents for a box of cereal. You know, listen to that commercial again and imagine that the, it's uh, it's Viagra that he's, <laughs> he's happy about. Yeah, but I mean, at least they were creative and they were appealing to kids and they, the sales pitch was permanent. I still like Sugar Crisp. I still eat Sugar Pops. And they, now they're called Corn Pops. And, and and it's called Honey Crisp. They don't they changed they took the sugar right out of the name. Yeah. But I remember when they were honest about it, and you know they'd say Sugar Pops Pete, and the guy had a gun, and he'd poof shoot it, the yep. sugar it up with sh shoot sugar at him, and it was all about the guns and the kids and the holsters and the cavities. The jingle was Weird. Kellogg Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Is oh, it? the pops are sweeter and the taste is new. They're shot with sugar through and through. Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops. Sugar Pops are tops. Now, Ben, you do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now. So anyway, so we come to the end of another broadcast day. Yay. I think we got a lot done today. We got plenty of done. But wait, there's more. Plenty of done. Really? You, you, I said you're going to do random karaoke with Joe and Jerry. You have to tell me at the last minute what song they're going to do. So it's a big surprise. I've Earlier never, in the podcast, no I rehearsal. approached Ben Kitchen with a song that he's about to look up that we're going to spring on you by surprise. And the song is, Ben? By the way, <laughs> If You Want to Be Happy by Jimmy Soul. Oh, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. <laughs> so from my personal point of view, get an ugly girl to marry you. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. If you want to be happy for the rest of your life, Joe, never make a pretty woman your wife like you have a choice. My personal point of view, get an ugly girl to suck your chew. A pretty woman makes her husband look small, the very one that causes his downfall. As soon as he marries her, then she starts to do the things that smell like farts. But if you make an ugly woman your wife, you'll be happy for the rest of your life. Can you believe it? An ugly woman cooks meals on time, Joe. She'll always give you a peace of mind, Joe. You want to be happy for the rest of your life? Never make a pretty woman your wife. So from my personal point of view, get an ugly girl to marry you. I'm tired already. You ain't seen nothing yet, Joe. How tired you're gonna be after being with that ugly wife all the time. <laughs> so let your friends say you have no taste. Go ahead, marry her anyway. A face that's ugly, her eyes don't match. Take it from me, she has a snatch. If you want to be happy <laughs> the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. So from my personal point of view, and yeah, get someone who swallows the goo. <laughs> I'm out of here, Joe. I'm out of here first.